Hello Team Beauté Industry, it is Tamara here, your founder and director of Beauté Industry podcast and online community. It's a Friday and I'm coming into your ears. How is this so? Because here is a bonus content episode for everything Christmas because today is the 30th of November. Can you believe how fast this year has gone? And tomorrow is the 1st of December. So I wanted to jump into your ears with a bonus episode to fill you in on all of my tips and tricks about keeping your spa Christmas-like, but still on brand and on trend. So here we go. Okay, so first thing is first, you have to think about your space. So if you are in a day spa, obviously turn around and have a look at what kind of colors and what kind of aesthetic you're trying to prove in terms of your brand and what that looks like. So you've probably got lots of natural woods, you've got um, kind of grey colours, perhaps you've got more organic timbers and um, perhaps green colours around your spa. So when you are decorating this space, you can have the luxury of having a beautiful green tree with some green tinsel, for example. Um, You might like to use something even further than that and have something like a wooden plank tree, something that's really on trend, like some wooden hanging stars and keep your spa or your space with that down to earth feel. Um, If you're treating something like a really high end medi spa, I'm assuming your aesthetic looks quite white, quite clinical. It looks very clean. Now, What I wouldn't um, advocate for is having decorations and things in your treatment room because you still do want to be professional and uphold that really clinical, clean feeling. And obviously everything has to be sterile. And we know that tinsel sitting in boxes for 12 months is definitely not sterile. So something to keep in mind there. You do need to remember that your clients will be seeing over the top Christmas decorations absolutely everywhere. It's in every shop. They're in the Meyer and David Jones windows. They're all throughout your Westfields and huge retail spaces. They're even plastered all over the streets and strip malls. So your haven or your salon, your day spa, your space, your area is one that really does need to still be able to rejuvenate your clients and come from a place where they can still rest even in the busy hustle and bustle of Christmas time. Now, we do also need to think about setup and pack down times, right? Because you and your team need to be more efficient than ever. So you need to remember clients are coming late. We've got really tight turnaround times and even you might have more staff that's on than normal. So perhaps if you're a business owner, now you're working on the shop floor, you might have hired Christmas casuals or spa fairies, and this is all going to impact on how smooth your day runs. So what I want you to try and think about is to set up or organize as many treatments as you can in advance. So if I have a a day of back-to-back massage, I'm going to make sure that the oil bottle in that room is topped up at the start of the day. And I might even have a spare one in there just in case. I'm going to make sure that I'm prepping more than enough hot towels just in case anyone sneaks into my room and steals them out and grabs them for their next facial. Um, Or if I am doing a facial, I'm going to try and set up the products where possible in advance as much as I can. Now, this is also about organizing yourself in between downtime. So if you do see somebody sitting around on their phone during the downtime and everyone else is running around busy like little bees, then you need to actually give people tasks to do. So saying, hey, Sally, do you mind just quickly setting up for Mary? She's actually about to go into a facial. We really need to get it organized for her client. Or do you mind just grabbing those bundle of towels, popping them in the dryer for me and then switching the next one on? So sometimes, and I'm sure I know this feeling, when we get so busy, sometimes we actually retreat and we just don't do anything because there's so much to do that we kind of go, oh my goodness, this is really overwhelming and I'm just not going to do anything. So don't expect that people are going to know how to help each other, especially if they are new, if they're a a spa or salon fairy, or if they are a Christmas casual. This might be the first time that they're working in a team. 
Now, I've just mentioned there that clients are going to be running late. So there's many, many, many reasons which we know why a client runs late and they can obviously give us all of the excuses under the world. But I want you to remember, especially if you're located in or near a shopping center, a strip mall, a busy area, that car parking is the biggest thing. Um, I remember working in day spas that were in Westfields and the car park would be absolutely manic. And I would have to tell clients, you need to be prepared to park at least 45 minutes or an hour prior to your day spa experience with us because the car park just gets manic and you would know that there's nothing more stressful than being a client in that scenario and having to try and navigate your way around a car park which you may not even be familiar with. So tell your clients where you're located specifically. So if you're in a shopping center that's a little bit tricky to get to, hey, actually, if you go down on the ground floor, come up to the second level, we're right next to the West Pack or whatever it may be. So give them really clear directions and then tell them which car park is best to actually gain access to your area. So yes, we have on-site parking. It's just around the back. You'll need to enter via Short Street or no, unfortunately, we don't have on-site car parking. What you'll have to do is just park down the road. There's a two-hour session there. Um, it costs you a dollar or two, whatever that may be, but direct your client. This also goes for therapists. So your therapist cannot be running late. Um, you can imagine how frustrated we get as a business to tell clients who are running late, unfortunately, you've missed your appointment. The same goes for the therapist. Your therapist cannot be running into the door when the treatment time starts. They need to be there and they need to be prepared and that is just an absolute recipe for disaster. And we know the domino effect that happens at this time of year. Once your clients start to get just back to back and they start to have that kind of flow on effect of running into the next one, running into the next one, that's when your therapist after working a 10 or 12 hour day are staying an extra 45 to 75 minutes afterwards because they need to finish their treatment. And at the end of the day, we know that the business owners then are also staying that extra amount of time because they're needing to do the till and check the client out. So client, uh, client car parking and also therapist car parking is a massive, massive one at this time of year. Now, huge one that I will touch base on is gift vouchers, gift vouchers, and all of the gift vouchers and also the gifts. So your team need to be briefed on every single Christmas gift that you offer, whether that's a $25 candle, whether that's a $10 lip balm or hand cream travel size that you have, they need to be across absolutely everything so that they can start to have those client conversations in the treatment room. And that way it's going to have a flow and effect with you at the reception or whoever's at your reception so that you can just constantly reinforce that message. So every single time a client does mention um, I haven't finished my Christmas shopping yet or I'm nowhere near started, which we know is often a client conversation. Um, they always ask us, have you finished your Christmas shopping? How far along are you? We can actually say, well, Mary, I'm so glad that you brought that up because we've actually got this fantastic gift pack. It's $35. It comes with a hand cream and a candle. It's the perfect stocking filler. I bought two for my sisters the other day or you know, something along the lines of that. Um, when your therapists know what the gifts are, what the gift vouchers are, what the promotions are, and if they have that excitement around them, that's actually the perfect way to start to get that client to be enticed. Better yet, what I would actually do is take it a step further. I know lots of product houses actually do gift with purchases and little Christmas gift packs and things, and normally they do include a top seller. So I was listening to um, Salon Marketing Coach the other day, Vanessa, and she was saying that what you should actually do 
is for example, if one of those gift packs has a top cleanser that your clients might like to use or a top hand cream, what you would actually do is pull your top 50 clients from that list. You would give them a call and say, hey Mary, I know that you really love this cleanser, you really love this hand cream, just so um, you're aware we actually have the perfect little Christmas gift for you and your family and your friends. It includes a cleanser, um, an exfoliant and also a moisturizer, but you get a complimentary facial cleansing brush and this gorgeous um, toiletries bag or for the price of X, Y and Z or whatever that may be. Um, that is going to start to create kind of exclusivity. The client feels a little bit happy and almost just really honored that you've given them a call. You've let them know before anyone else because you're making it feel that way and you're making it feel really special. Um, and I just really loved that kind of little um, salon marketing coach from Vanessa. It was really fantastic when I watched her live the other day. What you need to be doing if you're sitting at reception is reinforcing everything that the therapist has said in the treatment room so um, as soon as your client comes out obviously we always ask how is your treatment today did you enjoy your service whatever that be massage facial wax laser whatever you're doing um, and you could say something like mary i'm so glad that you enjoyed your treatment today um, remember that you can spread that feeling far and wide with a gift voucher from us um, which is of course the perfect time now valid for 12 months and of definitely servicing all um, genders there all ages so you can you know choose a gift voucher of your choice or we can actually just write a dollar amount on there for you and so that way it starts to get people thinking sometimes people just like to do a dollar amounts for a christmas kringle chris kringle kk um you know of 15 dollars or 20 dollars whatever that may be as long as your girls are coming back in with that gift voucher and they're upgrading they're adding on they're upselling they know how to do all the work to increase the revenue once you've got that small gift voucher. But it's about you actually driving that sale and driving that force to let everyone and anyone know that you do have that gift voucher available and all of those gifts. Um, Christmas trading hours are a huge one as well. I know lots and lots and lots of clients call up and they'll ask you, um, do you have extended trading hours? What are they? Who's working them? Is my favorite therapist on? What times do you close? Are you open the same times as the shopping centers? Like lots and lots of questions around trading hours. Um, even sometimes I walk into clinics now and therapists ask me, do we have extended trading hours? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> you need to know that. So if you're in a shopping center, lucky for you, normally the Westfields um, or the shopping centers actually give you the extended trading hours and then you can choose what you can be open or not um, sometimes case by case other shopping centers are like nope you need to be open till 2 a.m and that is the crux of it um, if you're a sole owner um, sole trader in your clinic day spa salon whatever you've got then you need to create these um, what I do want to keep in your front of mind is that if you are working crazy hours up until the 2, 3 a.m. or you're working the 24 hour around the clocks and you're in more of a retail space, um, just think about what time your staff member is finishing that shift and then what time they are starting the next. Um, so I remember I did make um, an error in staffing one year when we were in a retail center. And I had one of the ladies finishing at 3 a.m. with me and we were packing up and she said, oh my gosh, Tamara, I can't believe this was literally two days before Christmas. And she said, I can't believe you've rostered me on to be here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And this was at 3 a.m. And I thought, what do you mean? No, you're not working. Um, obviously, you know, there's so many things going on in your mind. I had three sites at this stage, people everywhere, staff everywhere, clients everywhere. And I said, you're not working at 8 a.m. And she said, yeah, I am. Have a look in shortcuts. And I had a look and I thought, oh my goodness. And I said, no, Dal, you cannot work. You can't, can't, you can't come to work that morning, no. So um, I came in and I worked and I had the four hours sleep, but in accordance to fair work, obviously that is not a fair shift and that is not fair work. So just making sure even I think I'm the most diligent person and go through the roster and um, staffing hours so, so scrupulously with a fine tooth comb, but sometimes you just do make those errors. So I believe, um, well, it was probably five years ago that I was in a retail 
uh, space now, but it was um, a 10 hour gap that may have changed um, from one shift to another. But make sure you plaster your trading hours on absolutely everything. So I'd be taking a look at things like your Facebook, announcing it on Instagram, um, updating it on your Google My Business if you have that option and just plastering it across every single platform you've got so that clients know when you are and when you aren't open. There's nothing worse than a client coming in and um, coming to the door to buy a gift voucher and your door's closed because you finished early or because um, you decided to have an early knockoff or whatever that may be. Another tip of mine is a funny one, but it's to be festive. Um, so we do need to remember that even though this is our busiest time of the year, um, we don't need to show that to the clients, you know, and I know clients always say, oh my gosh, you guys must be so busy. Uh, but we need to stop telling clients, oh my goodness, we're so busy, Mary. You wouldn't believe how crazy we are today. We're back to back. I haven't had a lunch break. I'm exhausted. I've got to come in and do it all again tomorrow. You know, sometimes we can turn into a little bit of a Grinch ourselves. So we need to remember that this is a really exciting time of the year. And I know when we're down there and I call it the trenches because sometimes you feel like you just don't get up for a breath of air. But sometimes when we are down there in the trenches, it's difficult to see what's going on around us, you know. So your client is probably extremely busy as well. But the minute that we say, oh, we're so busy, as a client, that feels like, oh, okay, well, you must be too busy for me. So especially if I'm sitting there in the waiting area or the lounge or whatever kind of area you've got and you put clients to fill out the consultation form, I can tell already the kind of vibe and what kind of service I'm going to be getting just by sitting in that lounge or waiting area. If I see five or six therapists running around like crazy chickens without their heads, then I think, great, my service is going to be rushed. If I'm sitting there and I'm actually, you know, I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and somebody pops their head over the desk, doesn't even have the audacity to come around to me while I'm waiting there. And they say, oh, tomorrow we'll just be a minute, hun. We're just really busy today. It just really shows me that you don't have time to perform a great treatment for me and that you're really not kind of immersed in that Christmas spirit. So just take a think of that when you are uh, running around being crazy, just try and be festive at the same time. Um, and then we need to be healthy. We need to be ha happy and healthy at the same time. So I have been guilty of this um, in previous roles. I have come in and I have stocked the back room or the kitchen or the staff room, whatever you call it, with Tim Tams and chips and lollies and the rest of it and cakes and, you know, Baker's Delight treats. Um, but we need to remember that obviously now nowadays, you know, we know so much more about sugar and um, the effect that that has on our mood. But it's a real kind of spike in that glucose and we get this huge energy and then our therapists rush through this consultation because they're just bursting with energy. It's almost like having a coffee hit. And then halfway through the facial or the massage, they're actually starting to fall asleep themselves because our energy has just plummeted through the ground. So instead, what I would advise, and obviously it's not as fun, but it's certainly going to give you that lasting energy, is something like um, you know fruit platters, um, perhaps wraps if you have your local cafe, nice salad wraps with some ham or chicken, um, even a sushi tray, you know, from your nearest kind of Japanese shop or whatever you may have. And that's definitely going to help your staff and your team feel a lot longer lasting energy and help them finishing, feel, oh, gosh, words, help them feeling less grinchy in no time. Another one I do want you um, to be quite mindful of is your presentation at this time. So coming back to kind of having that crazy time between shifts and that time between turnaround. Yes, you are probably working longer hours because the trade is longer, but you 
always, 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 and I've said this in, I think it was the second or third episode that I've ever done um, on the podcast about being presentable for your client, whether that's your first client or your last client. And this is even more impressive at Christmas because people are having a treatment with you. And then from that experience, they are actually thinking, should I purchase a gift voucher or gift from this business? to give somebody else. So what does my therapist look like today? Does she have perfect presentation? What does the space look like today? Is it clean or are the wax pots dirty? Is the teapot replenished or is there a stale old tea bag in there from 9 a.m. this morning? Are the tea lights replenished? So not only your therapist need to be looking immaculate at all times, but At the same time, your space needs to be immaculate. So having a look and a little checkpoint in perhaps um, halfway through the day, maybe after staff have come back from lunch and having a little mirror in your staff room and just saying, do you look Christmas ready or, you know, something like that? Do you look festive? Um, And that would be a tidy up of a hair. Maybe everyone's wearing a red lip during Christmas. Um, Maybe you do have everyone wearing fun little Christmas earrings or a bit of tinsel in their hair, whatever it may be. But making sure that you still look on brand, professional, and you are a therapist. And then the Christmas stuff comes second um, with terms of decorating in the hair and things like that. Uh, But making sure that that presentation of every single therapist and every single space in your clinic, day spa, salon, whatever you have, looks gorgeous. So that is it from me. They are my little Christmas tips. Um, What I would love you to share is if you have any of your own Christmas tips. Um, I did put a post similar to this in our closed group, the Beauty Industry Facebook group. So I'd love for you to come on in there and join. You just need to tell us how you are related to the beauty industry and then we will accept you. But if you have anything else that you would love to share Christmas wise about what you believe looks like a really great team or is going to help people cross the line in terms of getting those retail numbers on the board or a little few more gift voucher sales through their teals, that would be fantastic. Um, Feel free to touch base with your team as well and have a little meeting around this. And this is why I've done this on the Friday as a bonus episode for you so that you can be absolutely prepared as you go into the Christmas season and into that December kind of Christmas period. So I am wishing you all the success in this busy period. We have Um, had so much fun this year and this is cheers to another thankful and supportive and community driven year with Beauté Industry. I am so excited that you all come along the ride with me and I'm wishing you all the safest and the most Merry Christmas you could possibly ever have. Until next time, stay connected.